Hi, my name is Darlene. I am Ugandan. So I work for a company called Awava. Awava, where things come from. So what we do is we're a fair trade craft organization. We work with women in displaced situations to help them make money, basically. But we work with African fabric, a lot of African source materials. We want to make sure that a lot of the things we're making are from Uganda. They are all women who were displaced by the war, who had to leave their villages and end up in town. And so we teach them how to make the items that we want them to make. So what we do is we tell the tailors to make a sample, see how long it takes them to make, and then tell us how much they think that we should pay them for that. And we ask them how much they've been making. It's laughable compared to how much we consider fair. We make things for the home, so things out of fabric, we make baskets, we make clothes. Then we'll get the stuff from them and export it to the US. But they're allowed to sell any of our designs in Gulu, which is actually a huge price point for them because they make a lot of money there. There's a huge expat market. The, our lead tailor is a lady called Lucy Aoma, who was the first person that Kate met. Kate likes to tell the story. She walks into the market and Lucy had a stall. And all that was in the stall was Lucy sitting at her sewing machine. Nothing else. And Kate goes in to talk to her and she's just curious. She's like, how come you're sitting here by yourself? And Lucy's like, I cleaned my church to put myself through sewing school. And now I'm done and I'm ready to start working. And this is, you know, this is where I'm going to start. So Kate gave her some work to do and she paid her for it. And then when Kate came back, she noticed that she had bought some fabric and hung it up in her shop and, you know, it, it told Kate that this is a woman who is thinking about her future, right? She's been working with Kate for four years and she's built a house. She took us to her house, which she completed. And it's just, with all the things she has to do, she has to pay school fees for so many children. She has to take care of her aging parents. On top of that, she still has, I don't know, she's, she just, she's amazing. I don't know how else to say it. It's not hard for us to get women to work for us because of the reputation that we've built in the community, you know, that women know that they're going to get paid well for the work that they do. But because it's such a small company, sometimes it's just, it's hard to accommodate everyone. You know, we can only take on so many tailors. And so I guess what to is referred to as a social enterprise. This is a business and we are in it to make money, but that's not the end all. That's not the be all and end all of the business. We want to help people while we are making money. This was a way for us to just cut cut all the bullshit and be the just be the solution that we want it to be, basically. So but we also, you know, we need to pay rent and we need to <laughs> I don't know, pay for electricity and stuff like that. We would be making a lot more money. I guess if we didn't pay our women fairly, which is the whole idea of fair trade, we pay them a fair wage. We pay them a lot more than market value. I guess the idea is that we just want to make enough to live on and not enough to like buy mansions and like drive Mercedes Benzes. <laughs> Maybe there just aren't enough fair trade companies to change the status quo. It hasn't really changed a lot.